the network. Oh, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and welcome to Music News That Matters, where on the first of every month, we help you sift through the noise to bring you the most important industry news. We know there's so much information out there, but we're going to focus on topics that matter most to you guys and we'll give you our perspective as well, of course. In this episode, we're going to bring you the latest updates and drama on Live Nation, TikTok and Spotify, who, as always, Sean, are never too far away from the headlines in our podcast. <laughs> hey, and don't forget, everybody, before we get started, since these videos are only once a month, make sure you sign up to our newsletter to get notified of the latest news and why it matters between episodes. You can also listen to the podcast on the go now. This episode, along with all future episodes, is on all audio streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, and many more. Let's get into it. What yeah, we got another, another busy month with some, a lot of drama this month, actually. <laughs> and one of the big ones is Live Nation. Um, I know that Corey did a video on the channel last week after yeah. this memo was leaked. To summarize, for those of you who are not quite aware, it was a very negative memo about Live Nation's plans for 2021 and the new artist contracts. The main headlines was that they're going to guarantee that there'll be a 20% drop from the 2020 rates for artists. So they're going to get 20% less than they were getting this year. And the, the, one of the big things that stood out was that if an artist cancels a performance, in the breach of an agreement, they'll have to pay twice the agreed upon compensation, which is just ludicrous, especially given how hard the industry has been hit already. Uh-huh. Yeah. And another main point was that artists stand to secure 25% of their performance fees for concerts that are cancelled due to low ticket sales. And another one that I think is interesting is that they're now required to get their own, like, cancellation insurance to you know they've got to cover their own ass now even if it is an event like the COVID-19 crisis from now on they'll be expected to sort out their own insurance which is crazy considering you can't really plan for these things exactly exactly I mean this whole scenario of course it came as a shockwave it threw a lot of people off because it was just so blatantly uh, violating but I've heard a lot of people speculate that one, that is not necessarily a leak. It's more intentional. So, and you know how that goes, right? It happens all the time in music yeah. and business. And when we speak of these, these backtracks, <clears throat> that also has been speculated to be a part of the strategy. First person I really, I guess first company that I really noticed and paid attention to that with was uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook where oftentimes they'll be hyper aggressive knowing that some of the stuff will have to be backtracked, but you know, I'll still move forward three steps because I got pushed back from seven steps versus slowly incrementally changing, which most people don't like anyway. It's almost like you have to, you know, ruffle some feathers just to move to the point that you want to. Yes. Yeah, a classic case of um, ask for forgiveness, not permission, isn't it? 100%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> That's what I, I think it is. Because they, they have so much leverage. We know yeah. we know the ball is going to move forward a little bit in their direction. That's at, at, at the end of the day. There was always going to be cuts as well. It wasn't going to be, you know, like, oh, everything stays exactly as it is. Everyone's got to adapt. And obviously, they've got to try and cover themselves. Just because obviously, they've been having to pay out a lot for cancellations. Um, yep. But they have come out and retracted some of the stuff. Um, so... They've said that they're not going to, they're going to abolish that requiring us to pay twice the agreed upon fee if they cancel the show. That's not going to be in any contract now. They're completely gone against that. They are still doing a 20% reduction in artist guarantees, but they're trying to spin that in a sense that they think it's going to be so lucrative next year in terms of ticket sales that it's actually going to make more money than it was in 2019. They think that difference is actually going to be sort of like leveled out, which I think is quite ambitious considering people will be very skeptical, I think, next year. Even if we are sort of like over the hill in terms of coronavirus, I think people will still be very wary about it. Because it's not going to be gone. It's going to be obviously lurking around still. Yeah, I think that's pretty ambitious in terms of show projections, but maybe they know something we don't know. I wasn't really going to shows anyway, so, you know, I, I can't really boycott or withhold my attendance from something that I was never in, in account for. But another, well, flip, perspective of it is a promoter was speaking on the fact that they think that this is a good thing in some ways 
although there was some violation in the contract and the language, there is a middle ground that needed to be met between artists and promoters. And apparently promoters feel like artists were having an advantage to the point that it didn't make sense. So mm -hmm. they could be the leader on that side of things and just level setting and having that trickle down effect from there. Obviously, I know they're also very angry about the, the cancellation, like getting your own insurance, which hasn't been discussed anymore since the announcement. But we yeah. have to get insurance for most things ourselves. Is this sort of, you know, I think, is that fair game? Yeah, that that's a, and that's probably a part of that um, conversation with the promoter saying they need to have that, right? They need to, um, like, get some more balance in things. I... Honestly, I just have no stake in that game. I don't care which one, and I don't have an opinion. Um, but when I was running shows, I definitely didn't want to have the insurance on me, and I hated that part of it. Yeah, and obviously we've seen that South by Southwest this year. Obviously, we really struggled. They couldn't really afford the, mm -hmm. the damages it's cost them, and I think most businesses have been blindsided by it. There's not many that have actually, like, sort of have their, have their asses covered by this. So I think it's only natural that was going to happen anyway. But it's nice to see that they have sort of retracted some of it. I think it's more of maybe like a publicity thing anyway in the first place, just to try and, you know, see the test the waters with the announcement and obviously then scale back, as you said. But they are, I expect more scale backs from this because obviously the industry was up in arms last week about it. Mm. But that is the latest on Live Nation. Another thing, interestingly, from yesterday, so 29, Monday, 29th of June, recording today on Tuesday, um, Indian's government has blocked TikTok and, a, and 59 other Chinese-based apps completely. So TikTok is currently not available in India, which is obviously a massive blow for them considering that they had, I think India, in terms of like downloads of the app, it's like 30.3% of the total of like of total downloads. Yeah, which is massive. Hmm. Like they were, they were the f number one by large. It was, it's not, a, not even close. Yeah, I know. I know so you were saying to me earlier that you've got a, you've had clients that have been, you know, working with you. And now they're suddenly like, well, what are we going to do now? It's not even available to us. Yeah, it was, I got, you know, and that was one of those things where I couldn't say anything back. You know, sometimes you, you think a client might just be trying to hold, hold things off, procrastinate, and you're like, oh no, we're okay. But that was one of those things where I had no response. I actually did not see that coming. Uh, you know, <laughs> so. I've only, I haven't even had the chance to really get all the details. So like I'm, I'm leaning on you cause I see a few notes you have in regard to soldiers and um, a tick, not TikTok <laughs> personality. Like, like was all, is any of this stuff in relation to why or are these just additional? So a couple pieces? of them are, the main, the main thing is that relations have been quite strained between India and China, like most of this year. Um, so the, the Ministry of Information Technology claimed that the blocked apps are prejudicial to the sovereignty and integrity of India, defense of India, security of state and public order. And they weren't very happy with China because earlier this month, 20 Indian soldiers were killed on the disputed Himalayan border with China. Mm -hmm. So the Indian army claimed these deaths were a result of a violent face off of Chinese soldiers. And there's been lots of news recently about a lot of Chinese apps obviously spying on users. I know there was this thing that TikTok accesses like your clip, your clipboard, your phone gallery, like every 14 seconds or something. I can't remember the exact quote, but there's. Do you remember there. that thing on Capitol Hill or whatever in DC where they were basically saying nobody in government um, could use TikTok? They were banned from using mm. it for government workers. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been that serious for a while. And again, I already thought when I just recognized the trajectory of TikTok, I was like, yo, this is going to be crazy. This is going to be an issue. Um, especially even just being getting, getting in the experience is weird because it collides worlds a lot differently than other apps where you, you're following people from other parts of the world. And unless it's like China or Russia where they might be using a lot of distinct language, but if they're using English, you don't know where they are a lot of times unless they speak or something like that. Um, so it, it really turned the world into a melting pot far greater than most apps have so far. 
Um, most people connect their region. This one was really connecting um, the, the um, world without people even knowing. And then you zoom out though and find out that Chinese businesses, especially these apps, have to report their information to the government. Like the government has access to that same information. That immediately is a red flag where it's like, wow, all these tech companies have an absurd amount of information. Facebook has an absurd amount of information. I think there's been battles before about um, our government wanting to see some of Facebook's data and data, um, Facebook being like, nah, but you know, it's America and how do things run in America? They have a completely different philosophy in which they built their uh, political system in China, which, which I don't think nah is much of an option, right? So, yeah. Um, like, so if you're telling me the government has access to all that information over there and people already, and government and China's already rising, and, and then you already understand the geo, geopolitical issues, then you think about kids with all these uh these features what do you call them filters where you're putting your face in it right we, people were complaining about that app where you, it ages you yes yeah yeah and they were saying like oh you know russia tricked people blah 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 <laughs> you know if that being true or not right well tiktok is doing it every day through these fil filters right every every time you put your face in a filter just like it's instagram except this is owned by a different company. We're not used to a widely used social network or social media platform that isn't from us. Exactly. Every yeah. other one is from America. The, the most, the closest thing we can get to that's not that is Spotify being in, in Stockholm, but that's different. That's not quite social media, right? And driving media that that conversation. So that just that alone, that shift alone is just is is interesting. Because it brings me back as well on a larger scale. You've got last year's all drama about Huawei and the five G networks and US and UK trying to block them coming because obviously fear, there was fears of security breaches and spying and things. And this has the potential to me to get on a similar scale if this continues, if then if more reports come out about the, you know, the technology that goes involved in the TikTok app and it's tracking and spying, like India's made a massive statement here and other countries may well follow suit. So that's why I think it's a, a bigger story than perhaps on the surface. Yeah. Look, they know it's happening and they know what the attempts are because it takes a, a con to be able to sniff out a con artist, right? If you, if you come up in, in the streets and you don't want to get robbed, you have to kind of, you have to learn how criminals think, right? Mm -hmm. Just to be a part of it, even if you don't want to be one. Well, in this case, each of these countries are a criminal <laughs> where they're trying to do this to each other so they can sniff out what somebody else is kind of positioning to do that uh, to them, which is like the paranoia is, is just going to be through the roof. And this can get, uh, this is going to get very interesting, right? We, we're very, we, we know that the wars aren't as much physical anymore and a lot more, you know, uh, digital, right? And coding, hacking, uh, media. So I, 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 uh, I think people could, should pay more attention to it than they are because I've been having behind the scenes conversations with some people who seem to be in more than know than me when, which I already think is pretty definitive that this is, a very big issue that's going to happen in between, um, you know, the countries. But some people are like pretty afraid that TikTok won't be in America for too long, or at least they're going to go through a moment like what's happening in India. We all know how tough it is, though, for the government to come out on top of these things, as we've seen in the past when they when Cambridge Analytica and Facebook the scandal about you know interfering with the U.S. elections and and Brexit. And obviously the government tries to take them on and get the information. And that was a long battle. It took many years and hasn't really revealed too many answers. They're not going to, I didn't buckle under the pressure of Facebook. And I just feel like we have a very long dispute again, which may not bring them any answers. Yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah. It's, it's weird, man. Just because of the political thesis, it makes America more vulnerable 
and things like this. But even though I guess, you know, politically we look at it as a strength, we talk about the freedom and freedom of speech and blah, 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 all that stuff. But when you think about responding to coronavirus, you see there's a lot more order in a country <laughs> like China because people in America think, well, you know, you can't tell me what to do. I have my rights and blah, blah, blah. Right. And the same thing goes in a moment like even these apps and the way things run in business. China has been blocking American companies from expanding to China for years yeah. and, and heavily censoring them for years. But even if it might be called for in this instance, it's so unprecedented, at least in terms of public knowledge on a large scale, that it would be very weird. And I would be interested to see how the public reacts to it or what the government would have to do uh, media messaging wise to get the public on their side and to understand. I'm going to be watching it with a very keen interest as it develops, that's for sure. Another thing related to TikTok in India, but not related to this ban, is that one of the big personalities over there, um, Sia Kakar, she's, she was 16 years old. And she committed suicide last week. She had over a million followers on the platform. I just thought I'd mention it because obviously it's kind of, it gets so many things get lost in the noise of social media these days, but it's just another sign about, you know, the behind the scenes of these creators and the, all is not as it seems. It's just, it's just terribly sad. Yeah, man. I mean, that I'm on TikTok all the time. And sometimes I wonder what's serious and what's not serious. You know, you can never tell for sure some mm. of the posts that these teens have, uh, some of the things that they're going through. And, you know, if you've been a team before, you know that there's a lot of volatility in emotions even if you weren't one of those people, you know that there was a lot of peers that had those ups and downs. And once you amplify that to social media level, right, that when that volatility already exists, it doesn't help. Uh, I'm, I'm still, I, of course, we know what social media can do from a positive standpoint in terms of uprising voices and things like that. But in terms of an individual generally speaking it it seems like it, it's just uh it's pretty harmful but i don't want to say and assume that her case has to do with social media um but i no, of course yeah. yeah but i will i will say um you hear a lot of you see a lot of crying out on um tiktok and there was one campaign that we were going to work in the song was Basically, I didn't even recognize it. It was like catchy sounding, but I didn't recognize that it was about suicide. So then I looked at all the hundreds of thousands of videos now, right? 300,000 plus videos where people are basically talking about like the last picture they take before they die. And it's like, how many of them are just thinking the song is catchy? How many of them are, uh, you know, um, serious or and kind of hiding behind a supposed trend? So, um, yeah, it's a sad case. Um, have you seen much of this or yeah, just what's your perspective on it? Well, one thing that got me thinking was that I'm not trying to say this is anything part of it. It's just something that I've noticed is that how the news was broke was that her management conf you know, released the announcement. I just think, I imagine being 16 and younger and having, you know, Manage, having like a management team behind you and all the pressures that must bring. It's not normal for a child to yeah. be in that environment. And I just kind of feel that's going to have, that's going to play a lot of stress. In fact, like growing up is a very different child to what you'd normally expect. And a lot of these stars now are quite young and do have these massive, like, you know, lots of voices, in, you know, talking to them and influencing them, not, not just the family, but the, yeah, the, the agents and the sponsors and the management teams. Now that just got me thinking about all of that aspect. Yeah, look, look, we've seen this for years when we look at child stars. Hmm. All right, now you have people that are considered normal but still consuming or living out a lot of child star abnormalities. All right, yeah, like, and, and without necessarily that immediate compensation, without the understanding of that dynamic, because so many people are going through it at once, it's just um, like even. I felt it when I came, I was in my mid twenties 
when I started to be more front side and experience just a lot of people watching and that shit was weird. Yeah. That, that, that shit is just weird. It's, it's not a normal thing, you know? Um, so I could only imagine being that young and having that many people's eyes uh, on you. Um, and, and look, and it's pretty, pretty well documented so far that there has been an uptick in suicides and depression and, and things of that nature um, through social media. And, you know, that, that, that whole paradigm of being more connected, but more disconnected at the same time is, is a real one. And I wonder how you solve for it. I've been off of Instagram uh, over the last week, except for my desktop. But uh, which is, I'm so happy that they allow you to do that, right? <laughs> like they, they've become they've they've become so functional on desktop that I don't really need it on the app because I only want to be on there for business. And I hope yeah. Instagram doesn't like hear this somewhere and then all of a sudden try to mess up the desktop. <laughs> but but um, like I can feel the difference in my focus, um, and it wasn't even one of those things where I was trying to do it. Like, oh, to become more healthy in a, in a social media cleanse, but mm. I can just feel it. It's clear, right? My, my, my intent is clear. My, my thoughts are less scattered and I'm able to focus on other things more. And I'm just continuing to do that. Um, and I don't know how to guard kids from that though, because that's so much a part of the experience and so much a part of the world. So much would be based off of that group experience of, of those apps. It'd be, it's a weird thing to manage. And going even further from like just finally on, on a management and sponsorship aspect, obviously TikTok is still a very, very new platform. So the the attention on those who have got a big following and, and the pressures on them is going to be tenfold compared to what it has been for people in the past. Because obviously they want to get, they obviously want to tap into this talent like now and just really stretch them out as much as possible because it's so new. Yeah, man. That part is trash. So like this whole management thing is extremely predatory in how mm. they approach the TikTok. Um, I, I want to talk about it more. I've been wanting to talk about it for a couple months, but obviously I've been light on YouTube, but the, the predatory nature of just coming in swooping up these kids and to become a manager when really you're only managing them for their numbers. You're not actually giving them, value a lot of these managers aren't they're really just using them as leverage for their own deals all right versus like seeing about their career individually as an artist it it's not making sense it's not adding up and i think there's going to be a huge moment where a lot of these <laughs> these kids crash at a collective time and i don't know what that's going to do to a lot of them mentally either mm. but I, a lot of them will experience the high and like the the steep hype, right? We know TikTok is exaggerated too. That's the worst part about it. You experience three million followers, and then all of a sudden, I'm only getting ten thousand view engagement, and I can't figure out what to do because some of this algorithm is not fully sensical in the first place. Uh, is is going to? It's just going to be something else that that's that'll be scarring trauma of its own to gen z absolutely i, I thought it's def, definitely worth like mentioning and just discussing this for a bit because it's, it's not the first time and unfortunately it won't be the last and it's yeah it just you know, not really any words for it yeah well our, our next topic is something we always tend to talk about is what's going on at spotify every month we have a little <laughs> a little chat about them um yeah. Um, back in January, we were discussing um, Marquee, which we're going to come on to very shortly. But what I want to do first is that there's been a lot of reports floating around over the past month that Spotify is working on adding music videos into its app. There's been reports that in the code now, in the app code, there is like a, an extra like button and feature where a video would go. You can swipe across from music and from um, podcasts and there'd be video. So they're now speculating that there might be some videos being added. We obviously know that the Joe Rogan podcast deal is happening. and There's going to be video on Spotify, like exclusively. So they're going to have to put that functionality in anyway. So are they going to 
push the wheel and include more videos. And that's what it looks like because they've already started doing it for adverts in the US, UK and Canada. You can now run video ads on the platform and they've been doing very well. Um, 50% of advertisers use the tool. It's only 11% in March. Um, Wait, so how many, what videos are they showing already? Just, you know, like the, the adverts, the, the audio ads you can get on the platform, on Ad Studio. If you, if you're oh, familiar. the normal ads. Okay. I and, now, and, now, and now they're doing like actual video ads. You can now promote, think you can now promote products or. or what are they showing the video ads on? I'm saying, have they actually started using them? Or you're just saying now they have the ability to, but when Joe Rogan comes is when they'll actually start running. No, they've been, they've been using them. It'd be like the, you know, where the canvas plays. You have a little looping uh, videos. They get played in that. Interesting. Interesting. I haven't noticed that. So yeah, 50% of advertisers have been using this tool now. And apparently a lot of Spotify users are using it with the sound on, not just muted, because you can mute the sound on the ads, on the video ads. Um, according to them, that they've got a 1.9% ad recall with 2.2 times 2.2 times increase in brand awareness according to company stats. So the advertisers seem to love it. It's a much improvement on the audio aspect. Um, so with the fact they're doing these video ads now, it does seem natural progression that we're going to get more video content on the platform more for more podcasts and for music videos. And it's just another case of we never quite know which direction Spotify's heading in one minute. It wants to be, you know, all in on audio, the Netflix of audio. But now here we are again, tapping back into video. They tried to do it in the past, like four or five years ago, they bought a lot of startups that were in that space. Um, and also you did an op-ed recently discussing the future of Spotify and what it needs to do to try and survive with the threats of TikTok and Rezo. But I don't, um, video wasn't really sort of like on our radar again. No, it wasn't, but I'm not surprised because video only makes sense when it comes to the leverage that they're trying to build in the podcasting space because a lot of people watch podcasts. I watch podcasts. Like when I first started listening to a lot of the podcasts that I watch, most of them I actually started watching them on YouTube. Yeah. I, I never, I still haven't listened to a Joe Rogan podcast. I've watched many of them on YouTube and then sometimes like listen while I walk around and use it like a podcast, Joe Budden podcast, same thing. I watch a lot of, I watch a lot of long form content slash listen, like do both. So it only makes sense. And then if you're going to do it from the anchor point of a Joe Rogan, then why not start to test out the recommended you know, your recommendation and then and, and see what those stats can really look like. You have to use this opportunity in this window to, you know, feed it back in because I know they know the value of a video. That's why they tried it before. And just because they weren't, they kind of failed doesn't mean that they, they um, don't think it's valuable anymore. They just knew that whatever route they were taking wasn't right or the timing wasn't right so mm -hmm. they know the value of it this is they, it looks like that this is their way in yeah i think the podcast route has to be the way in because music videos obviously they're not anything new other platforms offer that but if you can now get exclusive podcasts that have the videos for you to watch it's actually going to get people more engaged with staying on the app rather than locking their screen exactly because music videos which is what they were focused on that wasn't really all that interesting anyway the music yeah. videos don't have the the appeal they used to. No, exactly. I the, I don't even know. Yeah, how many? <laughs> there's so many songs that I listen to, and there's so few music videos I've seen this year. You know, um, so it, that's a part of it. And they probably so moving off of that traditional concept, but probably discovering what I just said that they don't have the appeal that they used to. And they make sense for a platform like YouTube where everything is video and then music video just happens to be a part of it. But a main behavioral driver like a show is, is a completely different thing. I'm um, also, you mentioned those ads. I'm not really impressed with the stats. Although they are good, they're early, right? And- Yeah, very, very early, yeah. So a huge part of that is just the fact that people aren't used to it, right? Just like any other platform. Oh, I'm not used to ads on my email, and now I'm used to ads on my email, and 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 now it's harder to get people to open their email. Oh, I'm not used to this Facebook ad thing. What's going on? 
and Facebook ads are extremely cheap, then they drive up Google ads. It, it happens. That's just a, the cycle. Um, so that's a huge part of it. You're going to have that when you have a newer platform uh, or a new, newer way of advertising on a platform and you have limited advertisers, whether that's due to selection or due to natural selection through financial limitation, right, that either way it goes, there's a, it's a small sample size. Um, hopefully they continue to you know, make it comprehensive, but I think it'll still follow that natural curve. Um, but they are more natural to do ads around podcasting as well, too. Then the so I I think Spotify is in a in a strong position. They're really w wiggling their way out of their music mishaps. Let's put it that way, and, and it's through every and they're finding their way back through everything but music. I would like to see them focus more, less on music videos and more on little artist interviews and documentaries on exclusive to the platform. Because obviously yep. Spotify has got an, an insane amount of access to these artists. So you can have them the film vertically, you know, interview clips and weave them in with playlists of artists. So you're playing their songs and one of their like interviews or a documentary will come on. It's been made by Spotify. And yep. that just, that would be so much more valuable. I think it's be so much more interesting for them. And it's something they could easily do as well. And just like, obviously, if you follow artists, you can get a notification saying, just dropped an interview with so-and-so or a new extended documentary. Because the Apple Music Beats One docs are very, very popular in interviews. And I feel like they should tap more into that. And that would be, yeah, just do much better than music videos. Yeah, they have the leverage, too. The infrastructure might be more natural once the podcasting thing is fully set up and the video is, is really um, put in there. I would be more interested to see stuff like that. So keep it on with Spotify. Um, as I mentioned, um, Marquee, we had a long discussion about this back in January when they first announced like the, it was their first ever form of like paid advertising for labels. Mm -hmm. And it was going to, you know, the pop-up alert saying new album or new track out by so-and-so artist now go listen. It's a little pop of advert on your phone and they did use them before organically and now they're going to start offering them out as you know labels could pay into this but it was going to cost a minimum buy-in of five thousand dollars so our discussions back in january were like this is obviously disappointing because it's only accessible to like the major labels and it's not really going to be very valuable for anyone else yep we were questioning the sort of results it was going to achieve as well but six months on and they're reporting that more than a 20% click-through rate for the ad service. Anything that's not, anything above single digits is very strong, as far as I'm concerned. So that's an encouraging number. Um, and they said that over one-fifth of Spotify users who were served a marquee ad streamed and promoted release within a two-week time frame and were 2.2 times more likely than average to save or play a track from it. They've got quite a few examples of some strong campaigns. One UK artist, Georgia, who released an album called Seeking Thrills in January. She got a 33% click-through rate on her campaign, with 22% of them selling at least one of her tracks or listening to it. And the most important thing for me is that Spotify have said that they've done a lot of campaigns that were well below the minimum buy-in of $5,000. And the key line is that it's their intention to make the tool the works for artists of all sizes. So it looks like in the near future, we might be getting this ad service, ad tool for everyone, which is massive. We'll see, because as much as I might speak against how some things that Spotify doesn't do for the smaller artist, there is also a lot of that to their benefit outside of, hey, we're just catering to a larger label, but just from a platform perspective, there's the curation benefit the limitation benefit uh, from a user experience point of view, I don't get a lot of push from Spotify, right? Because so much of it is organic in nature and in, 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 in feel. I'm getting these recommendations and, and I really trust Spotify because everything they're showing me, for the most part, I pretty much like, right? I'm looking for the playlist that they're showing me next and I'm looking for what's on my Discover Weekly and things like that. So since they have that trust built up, a lot of that is because it hasn't been inundated by advertisers who 
are going to be less um, less cautious, right, and a lot more frivolous in how they handle the consumer's attention. So I don't even know how. I mean, maybe it's profitable back in regardless. And of course, it's a company that's going to be the end all be all. But from a but again, I guess from click throughs and the effect in this for maybe smaller artists and or just anybody once it gets to that that mass point. I wonder what the click the rules will look like then. And I wonder how consumers will view those, because right now I guarantee you most of those people don't even know that that's an ad all right they don't view that as an ad this is probably just something else based on from spotify based on the stuff that i, I like to listen to because they always show me stuff that i like to listen mm-hmm. to you know so yeah we'll see how long and how how they are able to maintain that trust that they have because there's strict guidelines with this starting out that you'd only show like one per day and like two or three per week maximum and that it's only going to be sort of tailored to your listening history. It wasn't going to be too far out of that remit. But obviously, they, the more they open it out, as you say, the more noise and more proliferation is going to be in the space and the more advertising it's going to feel. Yep. But it's, it's certainly promising that even if this isn't the one that is going to be the one that's going to be like brilliant for independent artists, it's positive to see that they are considering you know, forms of marketing and advertising on the platform that will be catered more to us of all sizes. Yeah. Not just the labels as we alluded to in our previous conversation. And I still think this tool's got legs. Um, they're, they're rolling out more features like to target the ads based on geography and also categories as well. So there's gonna be three different ones for audiences. You've got users who have engaged with the arts on the platform previously, but haven't done so in a while. You've got new fans who recently engaged with the artist for the first time, and you've got super fans. So you'll be able to access that sort of data and, and target those three different audience types, which is, which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, look, they can easily be the most effective platform for music marketing if they want it to. I don't know what the goals are or, or what the complete timeline looks like on their marketing features for their ad system but i mean what better place to advertise than spotify you know exactly they have the data where i don't have to now have my facebook algorithm learn that they like that type of music and use these interests to then click over off the platform i can easily pop up within platform i can easily say people who listen to this this and this artist or like you said people who have listened to me once people who listen to me over four times that i mean that can be game changing um Mm. you know it just depends on how it's approached and it has always seemed like advertising has not been a focus for spotify and that could be to his benefit like i said there's a lot more brand equity and trust with them over there so i i mean kudos to them for holding out as long as they have to have and being as particular as they have but now they've started up let's see uh if if they don't uh you know fall down that slippery slope because it's very easy to start nibbling and then next thing you know take a big bite when you start seeing that advertising money especially for a company that haven't hasn't seen massive profits over his timeline Speaking of advertising, did you see last week that a lot of big companies are pulling advertising from Facebook? It's reported no. a few times. I haven't seen so, that. Yeah, a lot of, because of what the spreading of misinformation and, and fake news, and a lot of the a lot of the anti-racist Black Lives protests were affected by this as well. They've sort of had enough <clears throat> and decided just to pull their adverts because Twitter's obviously been flagging misleading or glorifying violence. But mm-hmm. Facebook wasn't doing anything to fill all this out. So you've got one brands like um, Eddie Bauer, Patagonia, North Face, Ben and Jerry's. Um, they all sort of have pulled their advertising for now on the platform. So there was an article on Music Business Worldwide, you know, sort of debating whether music companies should do the same. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a big discussion now about, you know, should we be doing, what should we be doing now to sort of tackle racism and obviously there's a lot of things been done we had the blackout tuesday 
Um, but should there be more of a stand taken against Facebook? Which I thought was a very interesting discussion. And you have to you have to agree that you know they, they've got to you got to take you got to take drastic action like this to you know to make make a statement. I think I think it's necessary. That part I agree on. It usually is the money that makes the change. Right? The voices are nice, but the withholding is just the way that changes seem to happen uh, more than anything in this country. You know, money or blood, whichever one. So I hadn't heard anything about that stuff. If people want to actually make Facebook change something, cool. Um, sometimes I just don't have those expectations of companies like that, uh, like like Facebook to even care. Uh, I think Facebook has definitely had a a past that made it really clear that the lines are extremely blurry based on the messaging they do allow, they don't allow the social things like this. Then you have the thing that happens with Russia. And then you have things like th kicking, uh, banning Louis Farrakhan from Facebook when he, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's not saying anything in, um, that could be anywhere near as bad as the stuff that they show or allow. So I don't know, man. It's um it's weird. They like to act like they care about uh voices and not limiting the people and the, like they use that conveniently, right? We don't want to limit or be intrusive and that yeah. they go on the other side and they get very specific and push certain people and voices off and, and things like that. So you know I don't really expect much from them in that regard. I think the main message that the discontent among the other companies that, that is that Facebook seems to think that they're above it and they don't have to get involved with this with these kind of social issues. That's the discontent I think is that they can kind of just you know, you know brush it aside. Because um, Verizon actually have pulled their advertising and they spent 1.5 million dollars on Facebook ads last year and half a million on Instagram. And they've pulled everything, so that's a that's a big scalp. Yeah, that's uh, that's commendable for sure. I'm interested on how uh, Facebook reacts. I'd be yeah, let's stay up to date on this one because I want to see what actually happens with, with this because I haven't seen Facebook really bow down much, they, and they do have a lot of. <laughs> additional income to sit on and wait out a $50 million loss, a $100 million loss if they need to. So yeah, I can't, I can't do anything but wait and see. Yeah, so I'm just looking now. A few days ago, they did make a statement saying that they'll take a similar approach to Twitter, labeling posts that may violate its policies, but are allowed to remain on the platform because they're deemed newsworthy. So it's kind of very wishy-washy, and I don't know if it's going to really. Stupid. That's yeah. that's the stupidest shit. Up. You can't say fake news is newsworthy. <laughs> like when we're literally talking, yeah. like I've seen some stuff on you know, what on Twitter. I'm scrolling, and they're like, "Yo, this is photoshopped to to appear as news, and it's not news, and it didn't happen." And we we like we took this picture of the KKK and put a different um and put and change the sign of who they were supporting and things like that that doesn't that doesn't act as news like that's just a lie yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, if it's so if it's newsworthy now i need to see your criteria of newsworthy if you're gonna yeah if you're gonna use that contingency because it doesn't make sense especially when we know for a fact even when fake news is told that it's fake news and even almost immediately still it told that it's fake news, it still has the ability to anchor and begin to nudge your opinion and your perspective. Because yeah, what they're saying is they're going to have like essentially a little information that says, we know this is bullshit, but open it anyway and share it just and stay, and stay on our platform. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's a very, yeah, it's a, a very terrible statement is <laughs> yep. doesn't address anything doesn't yeah nope. so that's that's facebook right now in in hot war yeah. <laughs> yeah they're used to it exactly one one final thing to mention is that twitter launched 
like audio clips this month on the platform. So rather than tweeting in text form, you can record some audio instead up to two minutes, 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, just a new quirky little feature from them. It's probably one, as we said before, it's probably one of the most valuable things they could have done because there's not really much, where much they can go to sort of like reinvent the wheel. And they're not reinventing the wheel with this, but it is a fun new way to engage um, post on the platform. Yeah. And if you're an artist, you can obviously record some, you know, put some demos on there and, you know, share, share your voice with, with your fans and it's just a new way to engage. Yeah, that would have been really cool if Twitter did it in like, hot Twitter days, you know, yeah. they did that in like 2011, it would have been crazy. Like they might have found their way down the path to really resemble some of the social networks we have up today, a TikTok-ish, a, a even IG-ish, Snapchat. They would have probably innovated, innovated further to this point before anybody else versus being left behind if that one feature was added. Because I'm sure the the behavior around that and the, the data they would have had insight on, on would have just probably pushed them to, to start creating more around that. I, man, that would have been very fun to have when I was less responsible. Yeah, it would be like a massive audio meme culture, wouldn't it? Essentially, they'd be building. <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, my God. It looks yeah. nice as well with the, the color background, your profile picture, and you click on your profile picture circle to play, as like a play button. It looks, it looks, nice. it looks pretty nice, like the way it's been designed. But yeah, it feels like it's very, very late to the game. But it's still like a surprise welcome addition to the platform. I gotta check it out. Do you but, know anybody who's tweeted audio yet? Oh, there was like on the first day, Lil Nas X just said the word penis, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course. So he was one of the first ones to do it. Yeah. <laughs> But they, you know, it's gonna it's gonna get shared. It's gonna it's everyone's gonna be talking about it. So why not? Oh, that guy. But yeah, there's things that can be done with it. You know, you can make of it what you will. But I, I'm I'm sure there's creative things to be done, marketing wise, to sort of leverage that that new feature. Yeah, I agree. So that's pretty much it on the news this month. A lot of sort of like interesting sort of like gossip, really, it feels like <laughs> with, that is with TikTok and Spotify and Live Nation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah, Spotify always finds their way in the news. TikTok seems like it's about to either compete or maybe even take the crown. Yeah. And obviously we, we've got a lot to talk about in the coming months about that, I'm sure, especially with... I'm still anticipating Rezo to make its way over the border, sort of like, you know, later on this year. Yeah, I think they might try to move a lot faster considering the India ban. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Like, it's been, how long has it been now? Like three or four months anyway, since it first rolled out, so. It felt like it's only been a month, maybe two. I suppose the beta was before that, but I guess like officially. Yeah. yeah. But... We shall see. It's certainly going to be interesting. Everyone's sort of just trying to fumble their way through this time right now. And we're not going to see lots of like major announcements like we've had done on this podcast in, in the past. But there's lots of little nuggets and potential stuff that as we look ahead to post COVID-19. Post COVID, PC, looking forward to it. 100%. Yep. Hope everyone stays safe and well. And um, we'll be back obviously again next month with Lots more news and lots more discussions. All right. Like and subscribe. Peace. Bye for now. It's the Matt Work.